Let's figure out the intrinsic value of Facebook. Now to figure out the intrinsic value, we have to estimate the future free cash flow and discount it back to today. So the market cap is 669 billion. Let's input that into our model. And they trade at 235. So they have 2.8 billion shares outstanding. So when we calculate the present value of the future cash flows, we have to divide it by the shares outstanding to see the estimated intrinsic stock price. Free cash flow, this is how everyone discounts future cash flows. They get the free cash flows. And um, Facebook has really solid cash flows, really solid numbers. And cash flow is the best indicator because it's actual cash that goes in and out. There's no uh, accounting or uh, depreciation or anything like that, no write-offs. It's just the cash that's left over after operating the business. So make sure you input everything correctly in the model. Now we need the last four years net income. And the model is set up to calculate all of this. It uses net income revenue and free cash flow to come up with an estimated future free cash flow and a terminal value. It's just a massive $20 billion of free cash flow. That's an, an, an unbelievable number. Look at that big jump in revenue. Every year, they, a huge jump in revenue. It's what you want to see when you invest in a company. Now let's look at that capital structure so we know what to discount the free cash flow by. Only 20 million of interest expense. I know Facebook is generally known not to have debt. 500 million of current debt. Make that 277 million. And let's see their long term debt. Seventeen. No, no, there's no long term debt. None at all. So they only have twenty million, two hundred seventy seven million of debt. That's such a small number for such a large company. So they essentially have zero percent debt because it rounds to zero. Zero point. 0.04% of their capital structure's debt. So they're pretty much all equity. Let's, let's just finish out the model. What's their income before tax? Because we have to discount the, the tax, the debt by the uh, income tax rate. Even though it doesn't really matter because they pay 25% in taxes. So the 7.22% interest rate on debt is reduced to 5.38% because you get a tax deduction. But it really doesn't matter because it's uh, it's all equity in this company. So we need to, to figure out the cost of equity. We need to get the beta. It's a pretty good beta, 1.16. A beta of one means the stock moves with the market. So the cost of equity is the same as the cost of capital. And we use uh, the cap M to figure out the cost of equity. And the WAC is 11.23%. That's what you have to discount future cash flows by. So if you estimate the future cash flows, 
each year, this is the year one, two, three, and four estimation. Then we do a terminal value at the end, which is very similar to the Gordon growth model, the calculation. And then we have to present value back that number to today's dollars. And the present value of the future cash flows is $586 billion. And when you divide that by the shares outstanding, the intrinsic value is $206. And it's trading at $235. So it's actually trading at a premium, a slight premium, 14% premium. So in according to the model, it's not a buy, but it's really close. So you have to make a judgment call on a future success of the company. Because previous cash flows aren't the only indicator of a company's future value. You have to look at other things like Will the product be um, received well in the future? Will um, they do well during the coronavirus pandemic? So let's look. We The intrinsic value is 206. And it was trading around. In, it was trading at a discount for a while. It was trading below 206, below intrinsic. So it was trading a discount. And then, of course, in March, when everything dropped, it was trading at a major discount, but it's come up past intrinsic value where it's trading now at a premium. So that's interesting to see. Thanks for watching the video. Please leave a comment.